hope you all are doing good today with our today i'm here with my team social legal literary it's a student venture okay. where we discuss uh-huh. about the intersection of law politics and uh, literature and today it's very delighted for our team to start a new interview series that is transmission where i nena bhargav senior yeah. managing editor at social legal literary Uh, will interact and indulge in a discourse of intersection of politics law art and personal experience with the work of the people of a trans community before starting with the series i would mm-hmm. like uh, you to introduce with our team in our team we have rajesh ranjan as a founding mm-hmm. editor and he's a backbone of our team and with him along with him we have kundan gayatri abhishek rebecca Pragya, Soumya, Niharika, Melin. This is a group of people behind every success of social legal literally. So Wonderful. let's commence our like first interview series. Party. Yes. Sorry, I you are not audible. Am I not audible? You are audible now. Okay, great. I'm very delighted. So let's commence our first. Everyone. And thank you for for the Zoom call and invitation. It's a delight to speak to you all, and it's a very good opportunity for me. I think uh, there has been some technical problems with the phone, but now I think it's okay. Am I audible now? Yes, you are completely audible, and even it's a pleasure for us to have you. So let's commence our first interview series with Kalki Subramaniam. She is the founder of Sahodri Foundation, who has campaigned the underlying cause associated and uh, associated with the community through her art, literature, and media. She is a famous trans activist who is continu- constantly working for the betterment of the society, trans society. She is a poet. author actor who has a sky in her mouth and a power in her expressions so shall we begin yes please i'm ready to sh- answer your questions okay so our first question is it is believed that art in a broader context holds the power to eradicate the hate in society and speak more vociferously which can be used as an instrument to show resistance against judgment transphobia stereotyping and perpetual discrimination so how you used this instrument to show resilience i think i yes, used art as a powerful tool to address uh, the issues of the transgender community and particularly one our community is one of the most vulnerable and invisible community in india and around the world so art has always been a very very powerful medium for underprivileged and underrepresented communities and of course for uh, transgender communities i think it definitely is a tool because we are a voiceless community and the art forms whether it's a painting or a theater performance or a song or dance everything empowers us gives us the real power to tell a story so we tell our stories through our art whether it's joy or pain uh, we tell our personal stories through art okay so that's very nice like art is a medium art is somehow a weapon you use as so let's move on to second question while doing your red wall yeah. did you encounter any instance where people feel traumatized while speaking and portraying their emotion and what was your idea with the project that you want to portray in the society well everyone most of them whom we interviewed and my team interviewed all of them were actually traumatized and uh, many of them broke and it was definitely an opportunity for them to speak out because for e- many of them haven't spoken for years about the the abuse that has happened to them uh, because of their gender identity and uh, whether it's a rape or a sexual abuse or a physical abuse or bullying i think for many trans people they don't speak about it because there's nobody to listen to so for many of our community people whom we spoke 
they were very, very uh, keen to share their stories. And many of them broke out. Many of them actually broke out. And in listening to these stories for over a period of one year, not only me, but my community people, my team, a lot of my, many of our team members also broke out and we got into depression and it was so difficult for us to, you know, uh, it was knowing the community's pain was like knowing more of what was going on with the trans community uh, and how we suffer, you know, out of, uh, because of the ignorance and discrimination that prevails in the society and in our families, how we have been vulnerable and how we have been victimized and become victims of a society that has become narrow-minded on gender, which has become phobic on transgender and hijra issues. So definitely it was a very, very, um, it was a very important, but a very uh, agonizing project when we actually interviewed, but it was an important work and we had to do it. That's very nice. Like you took this initiative and it's a much appreciated thing. So how art can be used, like the art you used as a weapon for, by, as a weapon to give the dignity to the trans community. So how you think that art can be used as a weapon by a transgender community to fight for their dignity, like being an artist? Whether it is a single person or a collective person, a collective effort actually is much more powerful. So when we bring our voices together through testimonials, through uh, truth return on paper, and then we put our red palm on our red wall testimonials. Each one of them write their stories and then put their uh, red, red coated, a red painted palm on the paper. So it is like a slap to the society. It's like our own blood. It's like our own blood, our own um, pain is also exhibited there. You can interpret art in different ways. So I'm telling just two ways how you can interpret our testimonials, our girls' testimonial and our community's stories. So I think when collectively we make an effort to tell the stories of all the people who have uh, gone through a similar experience that is horrible and which the cisgendered community may not have even imagined because uh, you're all privileged and the cisgendered community is privileged and privileged people really don't know the pain of the unprivileged. So that is one of the reasons we brought this project to life and made sure that the entire community is participating in the project. Okay, so like I have the question regarding that, like being an artist with myself, I believe that art encourages people to express and understand emotion through artistic expressions. And though the creative process, it's like sometimes a therapy to overcome with the pain like you did with the Red Wall project. So sometimes according to you, how art helps the trans community out from their Catholic experiences, like through, like how did you feel like it can help? That's what I, I, I say again, that it is a powerful tool to tell your stories. And it is, uh, way to seek social justice and of course time and again artists around the world have used um, their paintings to represent um, or to resist injustice for example picasso's gotlika is a very good example of uh, a painting which depicted the terror of war, of what happened to the people who were innocent but died because of uh, the war, you see. So we have so many examples like that about uh, uh, artists protesting. 
but uh, with with certain people like me who are artists as well as activists it becomes a much more sharper much more stronger much more powerful tool and through that tool through uh, through me i'm using myself as a channel and through myself i am trying to address my community's problems and uh, yeah my community's representation in the society so that's very nice like how you are representing your community so sometimes like on internet it has been seen like it's very insensitive for people to laugh on some jokes and like songs memes which normalize transphobia homophobia in the society and further the people defend it in the name of artistic freedom that is mm -hmm. the that what is your view on a portrayal of this kind of art on the same end you are using this art to empower the community to the people so what's yeah. your views on this i think to a lot of people who criticize we don't even care about what they criticize because you don't talk to stone right you really don't talk mm -hmm. to stone unless you believe exactly. that it's god so for us we don't actually worry about criticism because throughout our entire life we have been criticized almost every day for for just who we are so uh, another person yes. criticizing sitting in the comfort of uh, their homes uh criticizing over the phone or laptop doesn't bother us what really bothers us is their ignorance because they are uneducated even though they may to have be holding a degree or whatever i think in their minds they are so small and we have much better things to do than answer a few people's criticism and bullying yeah yeah like with that also i think there's so much power to you and the community because it's so hard for people to tell them that yes i am who i am so with that we move to question number 7 so it has been said that love has no gender and you can find love in any person irrespective of their gender identities and that's the true form of art i think like when your soul interacts with other soul do you think that judiciary or executive uh, should come forward to enforce light to love by finding such initiative through affirmative actions like you started one matrimonial site also so what your views on this and how was your journey with this i think uh, i started this matrimonial uh, site for our transgender people as a as an act of resistance and revolt against certain websites that are, don't accept uh, transgender people in uh, to upload their profiles and find their grooms or their brides yeah so for me like uh, the judiciary in india right now of course we have section 377 that has been decriminalized and living together two men or two women or two trans women or two trans men living together is not a problem anymore uh yes. but we don't have any clear laws on marriage um because gay marriage is still a thing to look for in india we don't really talk about the possibility of people getting married but yes uh, many couple do get married and uh, i don't think there is opposition on that and i know that a lot of many transgender people also get married uh, and uh, start to live together but the thing is like there is no legal uh, protection for this marriage that is the problem you know because this is according to the law this is not considered marriage or this is not considered a crime so there is no protection for this marriage for example uh when one of the one of the persons actually cheats or beats up his wife or something happens between them two or loots uh, the partner or whatever it is then they need to go to the court then they need to go to the police so that is where the problem will come when how to address 
how to get legal counseling or legal services and justice for the person who has been affected. Yeah. So we definitely need laws that uh, facilitate, that approve gay marriage, lesbian marriage, trans marriage. Yes. And at last, we need a society to accept these laws also. Like, because even today itself, people are not comfortable with many things. And I think it's the high time people should com get comfortable themselves with this. So, uh, with this, what you have a commendable work in cinema also. Like, I'm going through your work and I was so astonished. Wow. So, we, you are an award winner for a best film in Dada Sahib. Dada Sahib Falke Film Festival. How was your journey in cinema while encountering all the ups and downs and whose work inspired you a lot for the same? I think uh, maybe I, when I was a child, I wanted to uh, be an actress. But then I later when I became an adult, I understood that Indian film industry is so narrow-minded. Because um, even if you wanted to become an actress, then you be your objective hide. Until unless you have, you're lucky, you cannot really be a superstar or a very good actress in film industry. Mm -hmm. Either you have to have, be uh, from the Kapoor family or from the Bachil family or from the Rajni Khan's family. Or you have, of course. <laughs> And or you have to have lots of money to produce your own films and have political influence and all that. Well, I was not interested in all that. So for me, film was another medium like art, which I used to tell our stories. So whether it's my Tamil film, that Thiki, in which I played the lead role, it's a biographical film about the story of a transgender person, a fictional one. But still, it was the first film in India that talks entire life of a trans person. And uh, whether amazing. it is my, the lone wolf in which I played one of the protagonists of the film, or the recent film in Tamil, the Sarkar, in which I played a very a little but very respectable part. That's my, that, that is just basically, that's my film journey. Because besides that, Indian filmmakers not many actually come forward to break the ceiling, break the stereotypes and um, really respect trans people. They just see a transgender person as a transgender person. They don't see us as actors or humans. That is a problem with Indian film industry. And I think I'm not interested in acting really, but I'm interested in making a film because I want to break that ceiling. You see, I want to break, I want to make a film that actually breaks the stereotypes about stereotypes. Yeah. I guess it's very necessary to like make this, to break this kind of st stereotypes by using art because art is a medium which can be seen as art, which used to empower people, not the one which used to make a people feel exclusive so yes so in the realm of time it has been seen as how many how sometimes Ali suppressed the voice of a trans people like uh, even in the film industry or like in art everywhere rather than uplifting them so do you think that audacity of art could help them to come out of this and art can be used as a weapon against them yes of course um art can truly be a weapon. I mean, for that sense, movies are art forms, of course. Art could be anything, like a theater performance. For example, the vagina monologues, which originated from the US, has traveled throughout the world. And it's a very powerful theater movement, which still mm. continues to uh, empower women, women of all levels. Yes, yes. Um, that is an art form. And of course, um, uh, other art forms like dancing or, you know, community journalism, video filmmaking, where you give a camera to a uh, person from the community and ask them to film their own stories. 
it's it's uh, art is definitely a tool and time and again it has been proved so we do it too so yeah like it's very necessary too so like we have seen like uh, we come through our experience in art cinema so you have you are a poet also and yes. you written like a beautiful you have a beautiful collection of metaphors of hard hitting poetry title kirti urithan and it is believe that poetry is a delightful source for expressing pain happiness sorrow so what was your medium like how you write, wrote everything what was going in your mind while writing i guess you are unmuted uh kalki you need to unmute yourself we are okay. not able to hear you okay. yeah yeah it's no. unmuted now okay great so poetry as i say is a very powerful medium again uh, which is definitely about um, which could which is a very powerful medium about telling stories but the, problem with poetry is that uh <clears throat> it's a it's a very different uh, problem i mean uh, most poems are very very uh literate and only people who are who are uh, you know educated or who are able to understand the intellectual speech and meanings only understand poetry so that is a problem with poetry that it actually reaches to a certain section of the audience whereas film and even paintings visual uh representations which visual arts could be much more uh easy to understand and easy to easy for reaching out to the people uh to, yeah reaching reaching out to the people that's what i would say but poetry spoken word is definitely a very very important tool and i have used it uh i've used it actually in a blended way i've uh, made poetry films uh converting my poetry into visual films wherein so i nice. actually tell my speak my my poetry is uh, tell my recite my poetry with a visual so that was very very uh welcome done light so even poetry when visually told is really uh, like my people and understood by people can you please mention some places like your platform where we can access to your poems like i guess there might be on internet yeah i think you when you visit my youtube channel i think uh, uh, there will be a playlist called badu v a d u vadu means in tamil it is a uh, uh, scar so maybe in that um, i have a channel called kalki subramaniam in which there is a playlist called in my videos there is something called as vadu so in vadu you will be seeing around uh, six of my poetry films in that i think at least three to four have subtitles i mean english translations of my poems so i'm sure you would be able to have a look at it and listen to it sure we will go through your poetry is like and even the name you suggested baju is very strong like so nice the connotation with that okay so like with the like we have a huge history of uh, transgender community even since the time of a freedom uh, even today the constitute even today itself there are daily wage like transgender communities fighting uh, in nawa among themselves to come out and finally they come out they are sometimes uh, uh, traumatized by the family so i think it's the time that transgender community should come into power political power and create their own comfortable space so what do you think like how your art like you are help you are doing this artistic work since the time and you empower through peace empowered people through art so how you think here art can help them i think art can uh, art helps in being a voice a medium a messenger a tool uh, for the community so it's actually like a pen to the writer uh 
Yeah, it's like the pen to a writer. That's what it is. How can we use it is this a medium. in political yes. medium? In political medium, like how in can we use this? I think in politics, in politics, we can use it to influence decision makers and policy makers uh, to resist, to oppose, to, to to expose truth. For example, cartoons. You know, cartoons are art, but yet they they actually express uh, politics. The cartoonists who have done it uh, to the extent that. Um, um, many artists have been killed uh, for for satirically telling the uh, you know resisting about terrorism, about uh, uh, religious bigotry, and all that. Yeah, so art can be in different yes, forms. Art. So this is we are doing one. We are actually experimenting also in different forms. Um, yeah. So like, is there any work of yours you want to share, like anything you did through which you influenced through your art in a political scenario? Uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure how I can actually share it because I don't like, have much experience. We can go through your website and see, like if you just tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. if you go to my website, www.kalkisbramaniam.com you would be seeing a section called art and artworks. So in these two sections, you can see a lot of my paintings and the projects that we do related to art. Okay, so that's nice. We'll surely go to your site and check your amazing work and we'll surely mail you on uh, Kalki Subramaniam, your email, so that we can give you our reviews, how encouraged we feel after that. So with that, I feel like sometimes, somehow your hometown Tamil Nadu has some impact on you. Like the state, your hometown Tamil Nadu has produced first TV transgender newsreader and the police officer. So do you think that state is providing a dignified life to the community? Or like, is there any impact of your state on you? I think one thing I wanted to clarify is that uh, Sometimes the media, uh, media's representation is wrong. I mean, Padmini Prakash was not the first one to actually become a news reader. Even before that, there was this person called Manu who was a news reader in Tamil Nadu for another television uh, channel. It's called Satyam TV. Many years ago, she was. Uh, but the media is not sensitized on what's going on. So they write, for sensationalism, they sometimes uh, don't know the truth and they believe this is the truth and they write it. So I think Manu was the first and uh, Prakash was the, Ms. Prakash was the second one. And uh, Ms. Rose Venkatesan has actually, she's a trans woman who has hosted a uh, television series, uh, a reality show. So there are many, many examples of uh, our community people doing great work. And um, what was your question uh, talking about? Uh, so like how your state is providing like a dignified life to the community. What is the contribution of your state? I think the uh, Tamil Nadu has been the pioneers, the pioneering state in implementing and making the transgender movement throughout India. Even before this Supreme Court judgment legalizing transgender community in 2014, even before that, in 2007, the Transgender Welfare Board was formed in Tamil Nadu. And um, many schemes were implemented to uplift the transgender community in Tamil Nadu. And I think even in the Supreme Court judgment, the Supreme Court has emphasized to follow the Tamil Nadu model in implementing measures to empower the community throughout the country. So that itself speaks how forward we have been always when it comes to LGBT community issues okay. and rights. So how was your experience like uh, having you organize the first Pride Parade, I guess? So how was your experience when you organized that in your state? 
I think um, uh, we organized our first Pride Parade last year in Coimbatore, but then our first uh, initial uh, Pride Parade was a huge failure because uh, on the day we were actually ha going to have a Pride Parade, there was this terror threat happening uh, generally, not particularly to us, but generally there was this terror uh, thing, a few terrorists, it was reported to the police that some terrorists have entered the uh, city and no public gatherings will be allowed. So our pride parade was canceled. And after that, almost one month later, we again held our first pride parade, which was a huge success. Uh, That's nice. Yeah, which was a huge success, but I expect more and more people to come out and uh, and be proud of themselves, who they are, and walk with pride, show and flag the, you know, seven colors, rainbow flag and trans flag. And uh, I think the first pride was a way to do that. I think the second and third one, the second one was supposed to happen this year. Again, there is another, because of the coronavirus thing, there's a problem, of course. Fine. But eventually yes. we will do it. Even if not this year, at least next year we will do it. Sure, like we'll be waiting for more stories and pictures from your side for the of the Pride Parade. So like, uh, I, I have this question sure. to ask, like I am in the age. Yeah, yeah, you're oh. saying something? Are you saying something? Me? No, I'm not saying anything. Okay, okay. No, no, no. I have this question, like uh, even Rajesh and I, few days back, were discussing about sexualities, how we are exploring ourselves. So, like we are in the stage we are, where we are still exploring ourselves, our sexuality. So, how we can mm. make our parents and society under or society understand or teach about gender diversity and tell them that it's okay to be of any gender or say transgender per se. So what's your views on this? Like, how can we, as a young, as a youth? I think the first thing that they have, we have to understand for the youth is that first educate yourself, educate your friends, and educate your family. Educating our family is a big challenge. But then I think today we have all the tools that are available to educate our families. YouTube videos, documentary films, literature, um, a lot more material is available, uh, books, a lot more material is available to educate our parents. So I think it's a huge challenge for uh, our young people to educate uh, our elders. But then, you know, our elders are also stubborn, but sometimes you will never be able to educate them because they have been programmed for years to believe that being a gay is an offense, a nuisance, a nonsense. Same way being a transgender is an ugly thing and a shame for the family. They've been programmed like that for many, many, many years. So sometimes it may be very, very difficult to change our parents. I think in many cases, we just need to shift from that and focus on our own lives and to empower ourselves. So that's nice. Like, yes, it is challenging, but I guess, I guess if we all come together, sometimes, somehow, like after a few times, we can. I, think I mean, when you actually go touch your mom or dad's feet and then beg them to accept you, no matter what, how many sensitive sensitization you do, they stay stubborn on what they believe in is good, what they believe in is pride, what they believe in is dignity. You can't do anything about it. Just move, move on yes. and uh, enjoy yourself and enjoy your life as you want it to be and hope that someday your parents will change. And even if they don't change, don't worry. There are so many hundreds of people who will love you. Yes, I guess sometimes we move out of our families and found a new family over there. And which is there where we can find, like, as it is said, like, home is there where you can find love. 
So yeah. I think so like, let's find love and comfort, but there are the, you can create your own home. And yes, your own yes. family. Like, and it's very necessary also to create your own home, to be strong yeah. in this like world. Yeah, yeah. So that's yes, what I wanted this... to tell lot to our trans community and to young women and men. When you're gay and you're not accepted, and no matter what, how much education you educate your parents, if they don't accept you, just move on with your life and enjoy, empower yourselves, make your career the best one and do things that make you happy. That's it. Thank you, Kalki, for like this message. Like this is very encouraging and empowering to us. So with this, we have our last question for you. Would you agree with saying like creativity takes courage? Like with the whole interview, we are discussing about creativity, art. So how true has been this saying throughout your journey journey like how the statement is validated in your journey uh i didn't i didn't get this part okay so uh, i repeat so would you agree with this yeah. saying creativity takes courage so how true has this saying been throughout your journey like how this adage is true in your I journey think, um, uh, like, creativity definitely uh uh, enhances courage, brings courage and uh, throughout my life, right from my childhood I've been uh, I've used I've been silenced and uh, because of my gender identity at school and in college I've been silenced and I've been bullied and abused and my creativity was the only thing that I had to tell my, la my stories to the world to people and for, um, for venting my feelings out through my poetry, through my art, and right from my childhood. If there was no creativity in this world for human beings, I don't think we will ever exist. We all will die killing each other. <laughs> So with that, I would like to thank you, Kalki, for being with us, for sharing your experience. Like it's very empowering for young generation like us and even for many other people who are still exploring themselves, who are still fighting with the community. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll wish you all the very best for your journey, for everything you are doing. So at last, is there any message you want to give us or our team? We would love to. Thank you, Naina, for interviewing me. And thank you so much to the Social Legal Literacy friends, the group of people, friends, students who have joined today uh, and given their time to listen to uh, my views, opinions, ideas, and a little bit of my life and our community's life and our art project. So if you're... If you're interested furthermore, you can actually visit our website, Sahodri Foundation, Google Sahodri Foundation, uh, sahodri.org. And we have a Facebook page, uh, fb.com slash sahodri. And we have an Instagram page, Sahodri Foundation too. I'm there on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So I think uh, thanks for this opportunity. Does, uh, then it's up to you. Yeah, I leave it to you. So thank you. We'll surely go to your website, check your work. And like, again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Kalki. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you very much. And thanks to everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Take care.